Welcome to Young and Adulting, a podcast of the Young Adults community at Christ Fellowship Church. Our hope is to create a safe place for authentic conversation around the ins and outs of life as we all try to navigate following Jesus in the world we live in today. Thanks for joining us and welcome to the conversation. All right, well, welcome to season nine of the Young and Adulting podcast. My name is Lewis. I'm here with my wife, Kalisa, my friend, Felipe. Man, we are so excited about uh, this season. We're talking about relationships, and that's because on Tuesday nights, the 20s and 30s gatherings have been off the charts. They've been incredible. So many people are showing up, and they're asking relationship questions. And so we've been talking about relationships on Tuesday nights. And we've said that we'd answer every question, but we didn't have time in an hour on Tuesday, so we're bringing it to the podcast. You can expect us to answer questions that you have written in about dating, singleness, engagement, marriage, life, how to navigate all the ins and outs of it. So the way this is going to work is we've got a list of questions that you have written in, and we are going to randomly point to a couple of questions and do our best to respond to them. And these aren't just our thoughts or opinions. We're trying to make sure all of our answers are grounded in the authority of Scripture. So the answer to all of your questions is look at this. This might give you the answer to them. So we're going we're gonna to point to some questions. Felipe, I think we should start with you. So go nice. ahead. You've got the sheet. Point at a question, and we will see what we will talk about. You have to close your eyes. I'm telling you. This was unscripted. <laughs> Off the cuff. What do you got? What do we got? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay, try again. Redo. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh my gosh, it's a long one. Okay. Okay. If my partner, who is a man at age 23, does not understand how to manage finances, no matter what I try to show them, what? no matter what I try to show them and they make poor decisions, how do I handle this? His choices affected my financials, too. Hmm. Good person, but doesn't understand that planning for the future is important. Mm. This is very interesting. That's hard. What do you think? I think that um, if he doesn't understand finances, at least he would, if he shows that he's trying to, maybe she can help him out. However, if the individual just doesn't want to understand and is just living carelessly and spending as much money as he can, then um, I think it's something that she has to think for herself. Is this something that I'm willing to put in for the rest of my life with? Yeah. You know, um, and there's there's grace and there's there's um, like a way of looking at things. Mm-hmm. However, if um, she prays about it and it's something that is not coming from God, then unfortunately uh, she might have to pray next. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I, I also love that they're asking this question right now because our church is going through a series all about finances and yeah. money and how to steward it well. So we have some really great resources that are in store and a class that's coming up. My God, my money that you can jump into to learn about those resources. So I feel like if they're struggling with it and together they can actually come to an agreement of like, I, I need to be able to steward my finances well because if you can't get that part well well maybe there's some other places in your life that you also need help stewarding and like guiding and that's why we the church and you know our teams are ready to support and care for those people so yeah, yeah. i think it's great that I, they're asking I, that i totally agree with all of that i think the word partner is interesting so i, I would want to ask what, what does that mean to you to some people they might use the word partner as just a this is the person that i'm dating if that's your answer that's fine yeah but if your use of the word partner is something more permanent than something dating, then we need to evaluate what phase of relationship are you in. Yeah. We talk about on Tuesday nights that the, the purpose of dating is evaluating. Like You have to decide, is this the type of person that you want to spend the rest of your life with? And so that's that would be my, be like, what does partner mean? If partner is just a term that you use, that's fine. But it shouldn't be a permanent state. You don't you don't date for, for five, six, seven, eight years. You should date to decide if this is the person that you want to commit to. I mm-hmm. think that's great. Yeah. And then I, I know this it. was a girl asking a question about a guy, but at the same way, if anybody at 23 is having questions about stewardship of your finances, yeah, it's time to adult, right? We need yeah. to work on a budget and go to the My God, My Money class and, and get stuff together. So hope that answers a little bit of your question. Kalisa? All right. I think you should pick a question next. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's see. 
Okay. How can you maintain purity in a single dating season? How can you maintain purity? purity wow we're going there here in the young and adulting podcast okay so I think a few things come to mind when you're thinking about maintaining purity one I love that you're asking that question because you're recognizing maybe some things in your life need to shift and change due to the season that you're in whether you're dating whether you're single whether you're engaged the boundaries that you can put in your life are so important there's some really great books out there um, and resources that our team has put together that we can link down below just so to help you with that but Really, how can you maintain purity? Well, you have to look at the friends that are in your life. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times because our pastor says all the time, like, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. So if your friends around you are not encouraging you, are not lifting you up, are not um, speaking truth over you and you're feeling like you're taking steps back instead of taking steps forward, like maybe you have to look at that area of your life and say, well, you know, maybe I need to shift that a little bit more. Maybe I need to find some really great friends to encourage me along this season that I'm in. So putting up those boundaries, getting your friends involved in it, finding an accountability partner, like that person will actually be able to help you and guide you when you're feeling tempted. Um, And really, I think if you're even in friendships, even in like the season of singleness or dating, like being able to have some really good boundaries set up in place and telling a few people about it like there's wisdom and abundance of counselors so if those friends around you are loving the lord loving like what he has to say lining their life up to really follow after him then everything else will fall into place and it'll help you stay pure Mm -hmm. what do you think felipe i I mean i agree with everything that you said i think uh for me the biggest part when i was going through uh, dating with my wife was setting those boundaries and making sure that they're as far as possible from actually sinning. So in the event that, you know, maybe we didn't plan for something to happen and we're in a situation at least where there's boundaries that will not allow me to get to the point of, like, making a mistake or something. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing was that throughout our relationship, that's what kind of, like, guided us through. We just wanted to honor the Lord Mm -hmm. and how... Did we do that by just putting boundaries, by talking to each other, communicating, and That's just keeping great. him in the center of our relationship? Mm-hmm. I love it. And and purity is not just for dating, yeah. right? Right. You you get married, the call of God on your life is still to be pure, right? Because purity is not just um, the act of having sex, right? Yeah. Purity is is your life. So in every way, like you get married, yes. Sex is between a man and a woman in marriage, so now mm-hmm. you have access to that, but you still need to be pure in the things that you allow into your life, mm-hmm. the things that you watch, the things that you listen to, the things yeah. that you read. And so, um, Felipe, you talked about boundaries. It's about staying as far away from sin as we possibly can. Right. Yeah. Because we know that, that a life without sin is a life that God blesses. And right. oh, I'm with you. I want to be blessed, right? Correct. And so that's, that's how we navigate some of that. I love it. I'm going to ask the next question, all right? So I've got the paper. I'll flip it around. I don't know what I'm going to pick. What do we have? Dating someone with different political views. You probably wanted to ask the question, like, <laughs> should I date somebody with different political views? That's a, that's a great question. Um, I, I love that thought process, and, and that's an interesting question. Now, what I would say is there are some things in politics that you can completely disagree with, and that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Like, if you have a different thought of uh, the impact of tariffs on the economy than I do, that should not be a factor in our relationship at all. Like, if you have a different idea of how the tax code should work, go for it, right? That's Those are small political details. The problem is that politics has gotten into some pretty biblical places the past couple of years. Yeah. And so what we need to make sure is that we agree on the biblical uh, basis and foundation of our life. Yeah. So uh, to this person, like, I think you can date somebody with different political views of non-biblical issues. Mm-hmm. You should date someone with the same views on what the Bible has to say about uh, certain issues. Like We cannot uh, get into a relationship with somebody who disagrees with us on the fundamental level of the authority of scripture and, and what it means in our lives. So right. I would I would say that's 
maybe not not a red flag, but is it? It's close to a red flag, right? Yeah. It's close to it. What would you all say? I think that uh, sometimes we put a lot of emphasis on the political affiliation of somebody. But um, instead of agreeing with maybe the political views of a person or the actual party, um, we should base our understanding of everything through the word of God, what you were saying. Yeah. So instead of saying a, a Democrat or a Republican, what I'm trying to see is, who this person is and what they believe because based on what they believe they're going to shape the rest of their uh, thoughts and everything around that so if it's something that is a deal breaker uh, that is like uh, it's okay. a spine it's there a spine go. issue or yep. is it something else you know right if it's a spine issue and you know that it's not true that that, that um, is not right then you need to hold on to your your um, your beliefs and mm -hmm. you know filter everything through the word of God and then make your I decision then instead of just because somebody's labeled something else. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's so wise. There's wisdom in that. Like filtering everything through the word of God. If you're thinking about dating someone or wanting to get married to that person, like when you're in this engaged season, like really filtering it through the word of God and making sure we've been echoing this a lot and saying it of like you want to build your life on the word of God. So whatever he says which you can find in his word if you're not daily, consistently walking with Jesus by opening up scripture, seeing what he actually says about some of these things, then we're, we're probably doing it wrong if we're not because we won't be hearing the word of God. And if you could read the same scripture over and over again, but really you can get something different from it every time because the Bible's alive and it's mm -hmm. active, it's breathing. So like we want to make sure we're building our life on Jesus and building our, our foundation, the core beliefs, what mm -hmm. we want to believe is really rooted and aligning with what he has to say. So if we're not doing it, yeah. Yeah. that's not just going to affect this one area, the political or biblical side of things, but really like every area of our life. Correct. Mm -hmm. Felipe, you, you talked about like uh, the parties or the candidates. And I thought about like, I don't get my political views from a party platform at all. Like that's not how I make decisions. That's yeah. not how we should make decisions. Right. I get my views from scripture. And that's, that's it. And so if, if you're going into a dating relationship and somebody disagrees with you, has a different political view about a biblical issue, yeah, it's a problem. And, and you need to talk about it. Because uh, I read this quote as we were getting ready during our relationship series mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. It said that there is nothing more lonely than ending up in a marriage and laying in a king-size bed with somebody that you cannot share the deepest conversations about real issues in life with. Yeah. So I think that's where it comes down to. It's a, it's a question on alignment. It's a question on um, being equally yoked. What does it mean mm -hmm. to be running in the same direction? So I hope that helps somebody out. So let's, uh, let's ask another question. Where are we at now? Uh, Who's going? Yeah, Pick one. See. Go, Felipe. Is there a way to know? Is there a way to know things? one should consider before ending a relationship with a believer. Of course, no relationship is perfect, but what or when do problems start indicating incompatibility? Incompatibility. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting that they would say it with a believer. Um, so basically, how do, you, how do you know when to end the relationship? Yeah, I yeah. guess both of them are believers. Mm -hmm. They just... Which is a great start. Yeah. Yeah. If you are a Christian, you should not date a, someone who's not a, a Christian. Non Christian. <laughs> exactly. Like that should not even be an option for you because right. uh, as a Christian, you are a totally, completely new person. Mm -hmm. Christianity is not something that you do, but Christianity is about who you are. And so if you belong to Jesus, you need to date somebody that belongs to Jesus. Come on. It's the same thing that we're talking about the politics. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. if we don't agree on that fundament and the fundamental level, right, then there's it's not gonna be um, mm -hmm. healthy for yeah. either of us. Right. So we got two people. So two people, and I'm I'm assuming that she is having some issues or he's having some issues, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she wants to know when is time to say no. When is time enough? to say no? Let's say no. All okay. Right. So we. I love um, this question because we talked about how the they're both starting off with their relationship with Jesus. No relationship is perfect, but when the problems start indicating 
that there's something wrong. So mm -hmm. we have to look for some of the yellow, maybe red flags mm -hmm. in the relationship. So that's where, you know, we talked about it just a few questions ago. Like, show me your friends and I'll show you your features. There's wisdom and abundance of counselors. And this is where... You know, sometimes we have blind spots that we can't see ourselves because we're actively in it. We're in the relationship. Mm -hmm. We don't see what's going on. But sometimes our friends or our mentors or accountability partners, they see things that we don't because mm -hmm. we're actively in yeah. that relationship and we don't see it. So this is a perfect opportunity where your friends, your mentors are telling you, hey, you know, it actually isn't cool when they do this. Or why did they respond this way? Or, or why is this happening in your relationship? Those are some of the things that people around you are seeing something and saying something about your relationship. It's probably time for you to, to one, start seeking the Lord, start listening to those friends because mm -hmm. they're the ones that are seeing something. They're the ones that are pointing something out to you, maybe because you're so deep in it, you can't find a way to pull yourself out of it. And then the, the mentorship is a huge piece where they're going to be giving you wisdom and advice. They're going to be like speaking God's word over you to help you really end that relationship because really a, a broken dating relationship is better than a broken engagement and better yet a, better than a broken marriage so if they're catching these things these yellow or red flags in the beginning of the relationship the purpose, yeah yeah then it, it's actually helping you mm -hmm. because if you're taking too many steps forward and you're already married say a few years in that's going to be more detrimental than what they're saying, hey, 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 wait, let's revisit this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm, I um, think that what you said is, is great, you know, um, and I particularly was thinking about the accountability partner, and it brought me back to, like, when there, there's sports that just watch past games to study exactly what it is, and sometimes it looks mm. obvious because... It, like you're looking at it from a different perspective, but if you're in, in the field at that specific time, you have no idea or you think that it's really hard. So in that way, I think that as we surround ourselves with uh, counsel, counsel that will help us through the relationship and they would actually um, point out things that maybe the other person is doing wrong and also what we're doing wrong, because maybe we're not ready for the relationship at that specific moment. Mm -hmm. So it might right. be that... It might not be something that the other person is doing, but maybe I'm not ready, you know? So I think it's a very personal and um, self-reflecting question that you have to have. And then with the help of the community that God has placed in your life, um, you can actually make those type of calls. But um, you, again, you just have to be trusting in the, in the Lord and uh, filter everything to his word. That's mm -hmm. also how he's going to reveal to you something. If you're talking to him, if you are reading his mm -hmm. word, he will talk to you and he will let you know uh, what um, what way to go that's great I think about um, like the purpose of dating right uh, dating is for evaluating we know that so what should you look for and, and I think what you're looking for is like some fun easy chemistry that's important you want to be able to get along with them they, yeah. marriage is like your best friends with you your the rest of your life and you're right. excited about it like that's awesome yeah. um, but you're also looking for like some godly character you're looking for a, a man of god a woman of god someone that's going to uh, pray for you the rest of your life someone that's going to raise your kids a, in the house of god the ways of god so as soon as you see one of those two things start to crack that's when you that's when you pull the plug mm -hmm. and it's it's not some drastic move this yeah. is a you know there's emotions and relationships and your heartstrings are involved but at the end of the day it's it's about making the best decision. Like you said, a broken dating relationship is way better than a broken engagement and way better than a broken right. marriage. So yeah. Yeah. that's that's the direction. That's what we have to do. Like be, be okay to have the conversation, talk things out, and see where it leads you because you're going to end up in the right place if you do that. Right. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, like, I'll have these conversations with a lot of, like, Christian young adult girls who are entering into a season of, of dating and they're trying to figure out, like, you know, is this person like the one? And, you know, I know we're, we're not looking at the other questions, but I, I know a lot of questions came in and they actually had this, like, is there the one or like this mm. soulmate? Because a lot of times I think in this Christian culture, and we have this idea of like the first Christian guy that I go on a date with or I'm dating is going to be the guy that I end up marrying, which mm -hmm. it it doesn't always end up being that case. Like a lot of times they're like, how do I know if he's the one or is there this idea of the one? Like, 
And and really, there isn't th- this one. Like, if you are living a life that is loving God and loving others and being pure and holy, like, kind of the things we were talking about and addressing, like, if you're both actively doing that and you're doing whatever you can to follow after Jesus and you're looking at him, when you look to the right or the left of you and that person is also running after Jesus with everything and is keeping up to your pace, then that's when you can start to think, oh, okay, like, I think I could, you know, that person can hang with me or like, yeah. let's go on dates or like, let's actually pursue this godly marriage at the end of it because it really is way better ending a relationship before you end up getting married is, mm-hmm. is the best way to go. And, and I feel like I've got to take pressure off of the first date, right? Yeah. Isn't the first date re- like <laughs> that? People build this up like, I don't know if I should ask him on a date. I don't, what should I do? And they end up paralyzed. They end and, up not even going on the date. Yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> think anybody asking. should be, <laughs> right? Like we got to take the pressure off. You should go on a first date if you think you may want to go on a second date. Right. Like that should be it. It shouldn't be go on the first date if you think they could be your wife or your husband. No. There doesn't need to be that intense pressure. Take the pressure it. off. Yeah. Make it work. How did you um how, how did you <laughs> ask Shabelli on a date? Like what was, um, what was your first date? So, we met during the pandemic. Okay. So I had just I just come back to the Lord and um I needed some friends and you know, I had I had seen her before, mm-hmm. so we became friends on Instagram and everything. She started following me, I started following her, and then at one point, she was with a group of friends that they were gonna go down to Key West. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the the greatest idea because you know, in the middle of the pandemic, and we're <laughs> all going down there. But nah, be fine. <laughs> yeah, but it was just a bunch of friends from church, and um, was I wasn't great. part of that group, and I barely knew her, but. Um, somebody dropped off and she invited me. So we went down there. Uh, obviously, we had different cabins and everything. Yeah. Uh, and we spent a lot of time and it was just hanging out with her. It wasn't like a first date. It was more like we're just with a group group of friends. Um, afterwards, we did get, uh, we did go out to eat ice cream mm-hmm. and we had a little bit more of a personal conversation. But I think what you guys are saying is true. You need to become friends with this person because mm-hmm. how else are you going to know her? Right. You know, if, if if we wouldn't have spent time together, then I probably would have just thought of her as somebody that I go to church with. Yeah. How do we actually get into that? And also because of uh, how involved we were at uh, CFE, we started serving alongside each other. So that That's also key. that also helped us to develop that relationship. And she saw a lot of things that I necessarily didn't see or was trying to show her just because I was serving, and the same thing the other way. And um, we just kind of like, until today, serving the Lord is what keeps us together. Yes. Yeah, love loving that. him and everything. Yes, so. that's so Kalisa good. Kalisa and I would say the same <laughs> exact thing. There is something about serving with your spouse Yeah. where regardless of what happens during the week, right. I know that life can get hectic and the bills got to get paid and that family member is getting upset. But whenever, at least once a week, you show up to church recognizing that this is not about me yeah. and I need to serve other people. You get to do that with your spouse. That's a superpower right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. It's it really a superpower. Is. There's the studies that show that couples that will pray together every day, the divorce rate goes from 50, 60 percent. That's the national average. Yeah. Plummets down to one percent. Yeah. Wow. If you just pray together. So. I love how you said you two serve together. and Yeah, yeah. And that's the type of person you want to marry, right? Yeah. Like, if, if we actually love Jesus, then we should be all about serving people because Jesus was all about serving people. Yeah. That's how Kalisa and I met. We were serving, and then I looked over. I was like, I, I like how she's serving people. And then we started talking and asked her on a first date, and that's how everything and happened. We got married in the pandemic. Yep. You started dating in the yeah. pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> what the enemy meant for evil. God Come on, can turn for good. Turns to good. I love it. Here, hey, let's, um, gotta find your spouse in the house. There yeah, you go. that's it. There you go. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> let's uh, let me ask a question. Um, let's see. Is it okay to get a prenup? It okay to get a prenup? That's the the financial <laughs> word for there we go. separating your finances so that if something happens. You're, you're set and you're good to go. Whenever somebody asks this question, uh, we actually answered it at the panel at Gardens Campus. Somebody asked it, and that was the question out of all the questions that everybody went, 
Ooh. Like they leaned in. <laughs> like if they weren't taking notes, we they were. As soon as we asked the question, <laughs> that was the one everybody got excited about. And I think that's a, a great question because uh, in Palm Beach County, if you get married in Palm Beach County, uh, you are handed a paper that shows you how to get a divorce when you're handed your marriage license. Like our culture in every way sets you up to say marriage is a great relationship that you have for a couple of years until you want to move on. Mm-hmm. And that is not at all what the Word of God says. This is a covenant before God, each other, and our families and witnesses and everybody else that's supposed to reflect the love that God has for the church. Right. And if God's love for the church is unconditional and unbreaking, then the marriage covenant should be as, as strong as the covenant that God has to the church, right? Yeah. Those are tough words, but that is that's that's what the Bible would have to say about it. And so when it comes to a prenup, should you keep your finances together or separate? What would you all say? Yeah, that's hard. Um, I, I think really you want to ask that question, why? Mm-hmm. Right? Like if you're both following Jesus with everything that you have, you're doing whatever you can to keep him at the foundation and the center of your relationship and your marriage, Ask the question, why? Like, why are you wanting to keep it separate? And if you do choose to keep it separate, then you want to make sure that, you know, husband or wife, that you know where the finances are going to. If one or the other is keeping it separate, yeah, then you have, to, transparency. You, you have to ask the question, why? Like, because mm-hmm. you don't know where that money's going. You don't know what that person's doing with it. And that could cause a lot of tension. Um, but if you can actually ask the question, why? Why are you going to do that in the first place? Why would we want this? What are the benefits of this? Then, you know, you actually can probably prevent a lot of crazy chaos mm. before it actually even happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, well, my household, we share everything like, right. when it comes to finances. Um, I think when we read the word, when it says that we become one flesh, mm-hmm. um, it's everything. You know, yes. we don't pick and choose what becomes one flesh or one becomes one. Because everything, it's together now. I'm, I'm, I am, the, I belong to my wife. My wife belongs to me. We both belong to the Lord. So we have to honor him mm-hmm. in everything that we do. Um, the prenup, I'm asking you, why are you asking this? Just like Kalisa, because the prenup is trying to pull the parachute before you even jump out of the plane. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know? So if you're expecting something Good. to happen, why are you getting yourself in that position in the first place? You know, yeah. if you are expecting it to fail. Now, if you're all in and you don't expect this, you expect to spend the rest of your life with this um, partner, woman, man, depending mm-hmm. on your gender. Um, and all of this, we, we have to seek to honor him. And we have to know that if we're in it for this, it's for, for the entire life. One of the biggest things that you said was this is supposed to represent the love of Jesus for his church and what a uh, responsibility that that is. I'm not perfect in doing it and I can never love my wife as much as Jesus loves the church and loves her, but at least I can try, you know? Yeah. And even though sometimes there might be some hard uh, issues, there might be some miscommunication, there might be something that we uh, agree on. My, I, I heard somebody said that the difference is that we choose to stay and we choose to work with our partners Mm -hmm. through everything Mm -hmm. you know and i think that is beautiful because that's exactly what god does without he he could do it without us but he chooses to partner with us and he chooses to give us the strength to um do everything to his glory so Mm -hmm. that's great i i totally agree if if the purpose of engagement is to unite then why would you do something that's preparing to to separate i love pulling the parachute before you're out of the plane what a great illustration these are, there are a lot of questions that people are asking, and, and we're going to get to all of them, but we're not going to get to all of them today. So that's why you need to like and subscribe to the Young and Adulting Podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. Are you on Spotify? Are you on YouTube? Are you on, on Apple? I don't know where you are, but I know that you need to like it, you need to subscribe it, and we'll see you next week at the Young and Adulting Podcast. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Young and Adulting. Follow us on Instagram at cf.youngadults. And if there's a topic you'd like to talk about, we want to hear about it. Send us an email or leave a comment with your thoughts. We'll see you next time.